safeties go. <laughs> hey guys, welcome back. This is First Things First. That's Mark Schlereth. Hey Mark, how you feeling? Oh, yeah. Off the six yeah, man. Mark He's was playing a little injured, under folks. the weather. Yeah, I had no voice for a couple of days. I still got a little bit, but so I can speak now. Difference between football and TV. Football, you could have played through that yesterday. Yeah. But you're out there talking in the hallway to people and everything. When I tell you, no, they, get to the Save question. It. Okay. Save, Save for us. Save right. it for us. Yes. Exactly. All right. It is safe to say most teams in the NFL have moved on from last week, right? That's the way football works. You play. There's an outcome. You focus on the next week. Unless, of course, you're the Pittsburgh Steelers, who, despite what they will tell you, probably still have a pit in their stomach after the way they lost to the Patriots. Between the catch and catch the game ending interception, there's a lot to dwell on. Here is Big Ben. The great and crazy thing about all that is it was last week, and we can move on now. Um, you know, we don't have to sit and dwell and have hindsight and 2020 vision and or whatever else they call it. Um, we can just sit there and move move on. And, and uh, the great thing about that game is it wasn't the last one of the year. You know, it wasn't a playoff game where we're having this final um, meetings and all that stuff. We get to move on and play another game this week against a, a really good opponent at their place. So, um, you know, and a really good defense, especially. First of all, of all the superpowers in the world, if you could have hindsight and 2020 vision, yeah. that's kind of a rock star wow. combination. Yeah, that is good. All right, so let's talk about uh, the Steelers and, and how you move on from it. We've all moved on, basically. It's Thursday. We're looking ahead. But it seems like the Steelers are still talking about this. It's still sort of festering a little bit. Um, and because they're still getting asked questions about it. Yeah. And you, you answer the questions, and that's just the way this game works. But I, I will tell you this. Sometimes you lose games like that. And it tells you a lot about your football team. And, I, I mean, I, I've gone in places like Kansas City when the Chiefs were really good mm -hmm. and lost a very close game and thought to myself, we're a really good football team. A really good football team. As a matter of fact, that was 1997, and we went on to win a world championship. Mm -hmm. So, I'm sorry, Nick. I yeah, forgot I mean, Kansas City guy. Yeah, just, <clears throat> just the night. But I think, I think – Sometimes you have to look at those things, and you, and you have to take away what you take away. This is the first time the Steelers ever played a bunch of man against New England. Now, they didn't find a way to stop Gronk, mm -hmm. but the next time they play the, the, the Patriots, if they, if they do, the next time they'll be that much better at playing some of those coverages that they normally don't play. So you take that away. We, we came down, and we threw a touchdown pass that wasn't a touchdown based upon the way the rule was written, mm -hmm. and they called it right. But... We came down in the last seconds and were able to do that. A lot we didn't, of positive. Right, and we didn't have Antonio Brown for, the, you know, for a, a large portion of that game. So I think you take some of those things away and say, hey, if we get them again, this game actually builds confidence, doesn't take it away. I, the, I agree with all of that. I, I, the, the one bit of irony there in Big Ben's comments is he's the one that's elongated this conversation more than anyone. He's like, he's like, good thing about last week is it was last week. We can move on now. I'm just like, okay, Ben, I'm glad you've decided now we can move on. Because the day before you gave these comments, you questioned why Martavis Bryant wasn't on the field, talked about why Spike knows yes. Spike. You talked about it. You oh, were the one that the coaching decisions mm -hmm. that, cons that was dwelling in the past. And now I get why you would dwell in the past because I can't speak to – the specific game you're mentioning in Kansas City, was that a game that determined home field advantage in the AFC? No, it was earlier, it was earlier in the season, mm -hmm. but it still gave us as a football team this feeling of, dang, we, we're a good football team. So that's, so and by the way, we did go to Kansas City. Of course you did. Everyone and, did. I'm sure we missed a bunch of field <laughs> yes. goals and blew up for to throw that one in there. Yeah, yeah, I mean, my guess is the Chiefs were leading in the fourth quarter of that game and ended up losing. I don't really Yeah, know. I'm sure that's what happened. The, the, I mean, that is the, the toughest part for the Steelers in turning the page is, because I agree with Mark. I think they left that game saying we're better than these guys. Yeah. Our best player was injured. We had we still we held him to 16 through 56 minutes. Mm -hmm. We had a stomach punch at the very end of the game and still drove down the field in less than a minute, put ourselves in position to win it or tie it, and then one bad play went against us. The reason it's not quite as simple to me is at least the way I'm wired, if I feel I've blown an opportunity that I know does change the future, like the Steelers knew if they won that game, the Patriots could not get home field advantage. Right. And now the Steelers know the Patriots almost surely will have home field advantage. That's something they can't change now. That's what makes this one particularly difficult. Nick, if um, I'll, I'll just look at your career. Ultimately, working through after graduation, radio jobs and everything, you wanted to be on TV. Mm -hmm. And you had to make some calculated 
decisions of how I'm going to get there. You had a few different paths of how you can get there. Now, if you had made a decision and it had derailed you that you couldn't get to your destination, you would be very upset and you wouldn't let that go. Ben and the Pittsburgh Steelers, I'm a week to week guy. I am. I'm about moving on to the next game. But they will not get over this loss unless they are in Super Bowl 52. Well, Chris, how could you say that? Because the paths to victory or success change so dramatic with those last three or four plays. Where Pittsburgh, I mean, we got New England, they could have to come back here. We could be the number one seed. Man, we could avoid Jacksonville unless it's in the AFC championship. New England could be the three seed and have to play an extra playoff game. Now New England, with, with Buffalo on their schedule, they don't even have to leave New England. <laughs> I mean, until January, for them to be able to make it to the Super Bowl. So for me, it's not going to be this week. For me, it won't be week number 17. It will be only if the Pittsburgh Steelers <laughs> get to Super Bowl 52 because with those plays and with those decisions, they altered their path and they easy made the path easier for New England. So for me, it's Super Bowl or bust with this type. Now, you could leave the game with a great deal of confidence, but... If they don't, if they're not able to participate in the Super Bowl, to me, this loss, I will look back and say, this was the day that the Pittsburgh Steelers missed their biggest opportunity. What I would ask you is, with this team and the perceived, I think, lack of maturity sometimes that this team comes with, mm -hmm. and they do, and the fact that they always seem to have a little bit of strife within that organization. Always a little something going on. Always something. Always something You know, Wednesday before you play in New England, Martavis, he's not there at practice, unexcused. And then now you're in the goal line situation, biggest play of the game. Right. Now he's not he's on not the in. field. Hey, but we ain't got no answers right, for that. But, but they always play. They seem to play to the level of their competition, regardless of who they play, every week. And this is almost one of those things. It, like I almost feel like this is better to get that loss for them. And I know there's no such thing as a good loss, but it's almost better for them to lose. Like... I, I would fear if they won this game and won this game going away, that that would be it. That'd be their season. Like there's no nothing that would motivate them the next time they meet. If in fact they did. So that that's what I was going to say, and that's my question to both of you as players. You said, well, at least they can walk away from this mm -hmm. game knowing, hey, we're the better team or the more talented team. I would think that's a bigger gut punch than if they just got beat and now they can go work on something. Doesn't that sting a little bit more knowing we really should? have? That's why I think it it stays in your and it stays in if you, you a little bit If you lose to a longer. team that you feel they, you're better than, yeah, then as opposed to just getting beat. So now you're right. If they if they, had, if they had, you know, won that game, maybe their confidence is all set and maybe they blow it because they do play up and down to their competition moving forward. But now in the back of their mind, they know Tom Brady is 11 and 2 yeah. against the Steelers. And I, and I know a lot of the players be like, oh, I wasn't here for that. But you know what? You just got to witness last week who Tom Brady is. So even if you just got there, the, the, the image of Tom Brady and the fear of Tom Brady, like it's it's real. You know, so I, I'm looking forward. I, I, Pittsburgh, they got to get to the Super Bowl because they made the path so much easier for New England, and that is because of a team called Jacksonville. Yep. And you want to be able to avoid them. All right, Mark, stick around. Don't right. go anywhere. Coming up.